It was the darkest and longest night ever in Ghana's history. A very tragic one indeed. June 3, 2015 will forever be etched in the memory of the residents and passers-by of the Kwame Nkrumah Circle, especially near the Goyal filling station. Lives were lost, properties destroyed, and many people were injured in the twin disaster of flood and fire. A month on, we return to the scene and find out how people are picking up the pieces. Anodami has more in the following report. On the evening of Wednesday, June 3, 2015, Ghana had one of her most disastrous moments being recorded because this place I stand, the Guelph filling station, exploded. There was flood and fire, and a lot of casualties were reported. Over 100 people lost their lives in that incident. We can see Enes Safo, who was 59 years old, Kojo Adai, a driver, a popular one here, we are told, Helen Danso, who worked in this filling station, was 22 years. We also see Philip Opon, who was 53 years, and then Emmanuel Kweku, who was just 27 years. They are not the only casualties. Some parents lost their children. Some couples lost their partners. Businesses were shut down. A lot of people lost their belongings to the flood. <laughs> She's saying that she's lost all her customers because when they come around and they see the empty place, they think that she's locked, she stopped working. Please, I sell oil, palm oil, and other things. Approximately how much did you lose with all the things that got flooded? At least about 50 million. You lost 5,000 Ghana cities. Yes. So how did you pick up? How did you get these things to sell back? I don't have money, so I went for those who gave us the goods. I went and plead, and she gave me some. Businesses were shut down, and the Vienna city, which is directly opposite the Guelph filling station, was no exception to that. I have with me the senior supervisor, Ebenezer Ponsat. How has business been after that? Oh, they are, they are not coming gradually. For the past... Eight days, they are becoming uh, gradually. But the Ramadans were affecting us badly. I'm in the home of 66 year old John Cotty. He owns the 16 bedroom story building that we are currently in. Unfortunately for him, he lost 13 of these bedrooms to the fire. How are you going to rebuild it for the tenants to come back? We, we are expecting uh, Goy, because the fire start, came from the Goy. And I know is that uh, Goyal is a uh, government-owned oil company. So I'm expecting that they will come around. And uh, me, I'm not after money. I want the uh, place to be uh, put back the way it was before the fire and the water uh, spoiled them. So but have you had any consultation with them with regards to your concern? Well, that you I don't so how do I do, I do, do the contact? Probably through any of your children? Uh, I think three days ago, I, I thought I heard uh, some people came here. They said they were from Goyal. They should come up to see me. They said they will come back again. They will come back again. And off they went. They survived, but they have stories to tell, wounds to heal, and memories they will live with. Some want government's intervention. For others, just a return to normal life would do. You're watching Joy News Desk. There's more to come. Do stay.